Welcome back to the Todd Westra Show, where we love to give you practical solutions to the world of entrepreneurship. Today, I have got an amazing story for you. We all love good pick-me-up stories, and this one is incredible. I've got a story that we're going to discuss today in an interview that I did with a man who has no idea who his biological father is. His mom left when he was five years old from Mexico City to come to America to earn money for him and his family. Growing up with grandma was really fun, but he was forced to work in the flea market, sewing clothes, making tortillas, making quesadillas, anything he could to earn money until he was about 10 years old when he decided to come make the trek to America, live with his mom and make a new life here in America. Given today's climate in America, this story is not unfamiliar. But what is unfamiliar is the level of success that this man has achieved in his life. I love this story because not only did he do what he had to do to get to America, but he also, at the age of 16, fathered a child. And at 16 years old, fathering a child doesn't put you in such an ideal place to find success in life. Well, he did just that, and we're going to follow his journey in this discussion today about how he was able to come from such a low place to bring himself to a high level, even to the point to where he wrote a book titled, You Can Overcome Anything, Even When the World Says No, by Cesar Espino. I'm so excited to bring you this interview today. I hope you enjoy it. I hope you gain some motivation and some excitement towards whatever venture it is that you're working on. And thanks for being part of the Todd Wester Show. Welcome back to the Todd Wester Show. Today we are so happy to have with us Cesar Espino. Welcome to the show, Cesar, and give us a big shout out. Hey, Todd, how are you? Thank you so much for having me on your show. I am very happy to be here with you and, you know, share my story with you guys. Cesar, I am so excited because I know that a lot of people in my audience, a lot of people in my close circle of friends and, and circle of influence um, have something in common with you that a lot of them feel like is a hindrance and not a strength in their background. And that is... Well, Latino. That's your Latino. <laughs> and <Mexico. laughs> born and raised in Mexico and yet living an awesome, awesome life here in America. Yes. Uh, Cesar, you are an inspiration to a lot of people. And I think uh, me personally, having some very close, like inside my family, ties with people of Mexican heritage and people feeling like because I'm Mexican, I can't. Um, a lot of mindset. A lot of mindset issues going on there. Right. Tell us a little bit about yourself and let's start talking about um, where you were, say, 10 years ago versus what you've been able to bring yourself to today and how did you get there? Yeah, yeah. So, you know, it really comes down to and it starts with me uh, where I came from, right? So, again, I was born and raised in Mexico City uh, and um, unlike many different families, I was born into a very humble uh, family, right? We had uh, really nothing. You know, when you think about it, um, I was born into a 250 square foot, uh, I would say house, right? Really, it's a room. <laughs> and that was, yeah. uh, four of us were living there, right? It was my mom, uh, my older brother, my grandmother, and myself. I actually um, don't know who's my biological father. I, you know, I never met him and, and you know, uh, have no clue his name or anything like that. He literally had wow. been on before me. And so, wow. you know, just being born into that, that by itself already created a, a, a pivotal moment in my life, right? Um, <laughs> the crazy part about it is that it wasn't only that, you know, I, like, again, I was born into not having anything. My my 250 square foot uh, house, right, <laughs> room, yeah. was made out of uh, sheet metal and, and, and plywood, right? And we didn't really have any uh, insulation, any water, any electricity, any anything on the ground. I mean, literally, that's what we were born into. Wow! So that um, you know, just being born into that in, into that society, you you think, well, it, it, is this all I have for me? Is this all you know there is for me in, in my life, right? And, right. Um, you know, that's how I grew up, right? Uh, very different than many people, you know. Um, 
Yeah, yeah. I would say that the majority of the women in today's society being asked to deliver their babies in a 250 square foot ho- hospital room, yeah, they would get frustrated. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Let alone having to raise your entire family there. Um, that is that is amazing. Um, yeah, I, I it just makes me think. I was booking rooms for a group uh, yesterday uh, for a corporate group, and the rooms were 550 square feet. And I thought, uh, you know, then I thought I was worrying that they were going to complain about the size of the hotel room. And I'm thinking, okay, that's twice the size of Caesar's house that he was born into. Crazy. It is. Uh, so tell me, how was it like growing up there? Well, you know, growing up uh, as a kid, you know, you're, you're like, you're thinking like, you know, this is normal. This is right. the life that I have. This is what, you know, what I'm destined to. And it didn't hit me until like two and a half, right? Two, two and a half years when I think I had another one of those moments. One of, uh, I would consider it to be an obstacle to an extent because right. at two and a half, um, my mom decided to take her leap of faith and you know to to be able to give more for us and she decided to migrate to the states leaving my grandmother my older brother myself behind right wow that um you know if you think about it back you know now that i think about it i said back then it was one of those things like what did i do like you know as a kid sometimes (laughs) you tend to blame yourself or you tend to believe like you know why is my mom leaving me like you know i have no dad right what's happening right and so that was going through my mind for definitely many many years um, that change, though, uh, happened to be that now we were forced. It was not an option. So we were literally forced um, by ourselves, obviously. We were forced to start working um, in the field market. So I, I still remember, like, as if it was yesterday, my, my grandmother, my older brother, myself, will we'll, uh, make food, you know, taquitos or quesadillas or things, different things, bread. We'll do different things, and we'll go to the field right. market and right. sell that to be able to survive and have some money, you know. Um, that wasn't enough, you know, we we're not right. making enough money and it was kind of difficult. And so then we started, I actually had my, own, I had my own, uh, uh, a sewing machine. So I used to sew close. So we used to actually sew close. I had my own sewing machine and my life was like this, you know, I would go to school, come wow. out of school. I didn't have the, the ability to go out and play or enjoy that. And really I had to come home, do homework and then start working. And that was, you know, 24 seven, you know, for <laughs> as, as long as I can remember. That was amazing. So you were, you were a forced entrepreneur. I, I was, I was. <laughs> and, and I think that that leads to, you know, it, you know, as we go into the story, I think that's going to lead to who, where I am now and why I'm here to an extent, you know? Um, so that one was, you know, the going through that was difficult. Now there was times that we didn't have really uh, anything to eat. We only had what I considered to be the right. uh, Mexican specialty, which is a tortilla <laughs> with a grain of salt. And that's all we had for days. Right. Uh, oh my God. Awesome, I can tell you that I, I can, I can have many of those right now. Cause I would, you know, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm in love with that. Um, either way, <laughs> though, a lot of times that's all we had. Right. And so, wow. uh, you know, so all my childhood, that's what I did. I work, I, I wasn't, you know, um, I don't know if you could consider a normal kid. And what I mean by that is that I didn't have the ability to go out and play with my friends. I didn't have the ability to have birthdays. I didn't have the ability to do right. all these things that many kids do because I was right. born into a society. The biggest lessons that I took from that is that I, at one point I'm like, is this all there is? Is there anything else for me? I, you know, I might, you know, my life starts from now and, and I'm going to work for the rest of my life and be under, under this society, these circumstances, right? One thing right. that I learned now is that um, just because we were born in, in a particular situation, that doesn't constitute or doesn't uh, say that, that you, you have to live under that society, right? You have the ability right. to make that change and that shift, which we're going to, you know, definitely get into that, you know? So, so was- yeah. So, so tell me, so tell me how that, how did the shift even start? Like when did, when was the first time in your life that you kind of, hit this point where you're like, is this really what I meant to be? Is this really all I've got going for me? Yeah. And, and at what point, what triggered that? And, and tell us a little bit about what happened. Yeah. And, and, and that wasn't until maybe later in my years. Right. Um, I think as a kid, I was still going through that, that, you know, accepting who I am and to what I was born into, born into that society. And one thing that I can, that I want to share before I get there is I think many people that it doesn't matter, you know, where you come from, whether it's from Mexico or any other Latin uh, country, it could be, right. also, you know, from, from a different country overseas. 
many people, when they come to the States, um, I'm sure they can relate to me, is that when I came here, uh, and, and that was when I was 10, by the way, when I came here, um, although it looked like this was a better opportunity at that time, it wasn't for me. Right. And I think a lot of people right. can relate to that. The reason for that is because I came to a new society, a place right. that I didn't know anybody. Um, I didn't have uh, really any friends. I didn't know no one. And then I was inducted into a society where you have so many different cultures, so many diversity on that, that I couldn't right. relate to that. You don't see that in your country. Right. Uh, the biggest obstacle that I had at that time is that I couldn't communicate. I couldn't talk to anyone. I couldn't, um, you know, understand anyone and they couldn't understand me. So that, that definitely makes it hard, doesn't it? Yeah, it, it, it does. And so that made it even, you know, difficult for me. So I remember one time, I, I think it was like, uh, I think it was like 10 and a half, 11 years. And I told my, my, uh, my dad who, who was my stepdad, but I see him as my dad now. I told my dad, I said, you know what? And, 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 and it wasn't a good, you know, good, uh, message except I, I told him, I, you know, you're not my dad, you know, and I was just being very defensive about it <laughs> because I couldn't accept it. Right. I'm like, right. you're not my dad. And, I, I don't want to be here. I, I want to go back to, to Mexico. I want to go back to what I know to, to be true. Yeah. The, the lesson there though, is that a lot of times we're so afraid of the unknown. We're so afraid of, of the possibilities that we rather go back to a comfortable place, even if that comfortable place is so bad. And that was me back then, you know, although that there was so much opportunity for wow. me here, I say, yeah. you know what? I, I don't care. I got, I'd rather go back and, and, and be miserable and, and have no life because wow. I was comfortable with that. I'm glad that it didn't happen. I'm glad that, that he didn't <laughs> listen to me and I stayed. Um, again, though, a lot of people go through that though, you know? And, 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 and that's the wow. crazy thing. So that, that, is, that is a crazy thing. And I think that is so self-imposed yep. that, we, that we are so um, unsure about what the new path that we're on, where it's gonna take us, that we would rather go back to something much simpler, much lesser, just because it feels comfortable. Right. And I'm, I'm just thinking of all the times that I've mentally done that to myself as well. Um, you know, this year, um, I, there's a business that I had that I, I felt like I should shut down for the last probably four or five years. And it just wasn't making me happy. And it just was eating up a lot of my time. Yes, it was making money, but it wasn't like putting me in a happy place. Yeah. And, um, I just kept, I kept clinging to it because I was so afraid to let go and just move on and, and enjoy the new things that I had created as opposed to, you know, just jumping in full bore with the new stuff. I was still clinging on for four or five years to a business that was driving me crazy. So, um, I, you know, nothing compared to your story, I, but it is the same kind of set of mindset that, uh, you have a hard time accepting the new situation you're in, even yeah. though it may be a better opportunity. Exactly. And, and, and that can be related to, you know, to anything. It can be related to, to an, an abusive relationship. It can be related to, you know, again, you're comfortable with, with in, in a particular environment and then you just, right. just wanna, you, you keep going back. Right. So we got right. to, to get out of that. So I, again, I'm glad that that didn't happen. Right. And I stayed. And, you know, throughout, throughout my teens, I went through a couple other obstacles that, again, I can see so many people going through that. One, which, which a lot of people come from a different country, they, they go through this, and that happened to me. And, um, I, I had my kid at, uh, at 16. I, I, I was, you know, uh, I, I think that was the next, you know, uh, <laughs> obstacle, if you put it that way. I'm, I mean, I, I couldn't have it any other, be any, any other way, except, right. you know, I was faced with, well, I'm, I'm a teen, I'm 16. So now I have to, I'm a kid raising a kid. Yeah. Um, and, and, and it was difficult, right? Except I, I said one thing very important to, to my daughter that time that um, when she was born and I looked at her and I said, you know what, I, I'm going to make sure that I work hard so that you never have to go through what I did as a kid so that you can have right. everything that I didn't have as a kid. So that to an extent was a motivation for me to say, you know what, I don't want my daughter to go through what I did through, went through where she had to work right. as a kid, where she had to, you know, where I didn't have any of that stuff and, and you know, that stuff, you know? And so right. I said, I gave myself that promise. And from there, that's when that, that kind of, I think that was my first shift. And we're talking okay. about, you know, what, you know, uh, what, what did I do? I can accept it and just let it be, or I, I can make something better out of it. So I utilize right. that to say, you know what, we can do this. We have the ability to, to come out and do something better and bigger. Right. And so okay. my focus, my first focus was that, and, and shifting that, I'm like, okay, so 
I got to take care of uh, you know, my daughter. What else do I need to do? Well, I got to take care of myself. And so one, one of the things that I started doing is that I've always been very um, fond about education. So I was okay. you know, 100% focused on my studies. I graduated with honors from, from high school. Uh, wow. Had about six different AP, cl- uh, sorry, uh, four different AP classes. Um, and right after high school, I went to college to get my uh, associate's degree. Um, and uh, I got in computer networking. And, awesome. You know, then I got my bachelor's in business administration and, you know, so I, I focus on myself and it got to a point where like, okay, you know, I'm doing good. You know, I bought my first house at 24. Right. Uh, right. And, and, and I, you know, as I reflect now, I was like, when, if you see me when I was a kid in, in Mexico <laughs> that had nothing, that didn't have a, a you work know, in the flea even, market. Exactly. And now I, I you know, I, I was able to buy my first house at the age of 24 um, and I'm not saying any of this was easy. I mean, it's, it takes a lot of work, it takes right. a lot of dedication, right? Except when right. you compare those two things, it's like, we, we have the ability to do this. Anybody can go out and, and if you put your mind into it and focus and work hard, you can definitely do that, right? So right. I, I think that was that, 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 that shift, you know, uh, part of wow. the, the beginning, not, you know, not 100%, you know? Wow. So, Caesar, I, I, here's the part that's kind of blowing me away, okay? Because like, I have um, I have a son who we took into our home uh, as a teenager, who is Mexican, and he um, he I would say one of the big awakenings in his life came when he was attending you know uh, church with us, and he was meeting some of our neighbors, and um, a lot of our neighbors were uh, successful entrepreneurs, had started companies, had done lots of things like that, and. Yep. He was like, man, you know, in my culture, I just assumed, you know, when I started mowing lawns as a kid, that I would mow lawns until I was 90. Wow. (laughs) And and I learned how to paint. And I figured at that point, okay, I'm going to be a painter until I'm 90. And and he said, that's just part of my Mexican culture. And that's part of we we tend to trap ourselves sometimes in this mold that we think we're in. And I think no matter what culture you're from, we do have a tendency to trap ourselves into a mold. Yep. How in the world did you go from being a 16 year old dad? Okay. Th- this is okay. Move to the States when you're 10, 10 and a half, no English, no nothing. And then you all of a sudden go to being a 16 year old dad. And then by the time you're 24, You've not only overcome those hurdles of learning English, but now you've got uh, a master's degree and you've got a home and you've got a way to generate some serious money. I mean, what in the world? How in the world did this happen? Yeah. And, 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 and you're right. I think a lot of times we, we close ourselves. You know, we, we were born into, again, a society and, and, we, and we feel like, well, that's how it's always been. And so we have to accept what it's always been and just, you know, follow that, you know, uh, that path. Um, I, may, maybe the fact that I started working at the age of, you know, literally two and a half, you know, uh, it, it was my drive to say, you know, if I can do it when I was a kid, why can't I do something different now? So it came down to two things, I, I believe. Number one is, um, is that uh, mindset that, that you, you have to change your mindset. You have to start seeing right. things from a different perspective. Well, how right. do you see things from a different perspective if all you've seen is one thing? And I always, I always compare this and I do it now. If you get, uh, if you get some glasses, right. Uh, and you, you put on the glasses, you gotta be able to see, uh, the, the, the circumstances through a different lens, right? You have to be able to open up your mind. And so that's one way to do it. The other way is you educate yourself, right? You have right. to make sure that you understand um, what are some of the possibilities. And once you understand what are some of the possibilities, you have to say to yourself, you know, why, why not? You know, if, if not me, then who? Right, right. If not now, right. then when, right? Right. So um, you, you start changing your, your beliefs. It, it has to be, it has to come down with your beliefs. Because I can tell you right now, a lot of people uh, that I know, and even with my family, um, you're right. People have that mentality that we, we cannot, you know, <laughs> overcome something. This right. is what is, is meant to be. You're even fighting with your family, right? Or your close friends. Because right. They don't believe in that. So you have to believe in yourself more than anything. Right. So I agree right. that it comes down to educating yourself, having that mindset and just seeing things through a different lens. Okay. So educating yourself is a key thing. Yep. And then changing the mindset and actually 
believing, like, did you visualize yourself in a place that, that you're close to being there now? I mean, what, what kind of place did you have to put your mind in to, to give yourself the belief that you could finish school, that you could get a master's degree? I mean, I don't have a master's degree, but yeah, here you are taking advantage of this wonderful educational opportunity and, uh, and making the most of it. That is amazing. How did you do that? So I, I think for me it started again when, when my daughter was born. That was the, the very first point, you know. And That's a good trigger. It was a definitely a good trigger, right? And, yeah. And, and again, I, I, I tell you this because I have friends that, that, that unfortunately were born here in the yeah. States. They had kids around the same time that I have and we're not in the same level that, that, right. we, we, you know, that they should be because of that mind change, that they didn't go through those right. hurdles, right? And so to me, that was my first trigger. After that, I'm like, again, I have to educate myself. And once I started going through, you know, my education, I got exposed to more things. I got exposed to other, other people, other people that wanted to, um, to get more out of their, their, their life. People that were definitely born here in the States, except right. I'm like, well, I can be that person, right? I, I can do something to that, to that extent. I don't know right. what level, um, I gotta be able to do that. Back then there was really no manifestation that I, that I did. Now I do that. Um, I didn't do that back then. Uh, it was primarily just going through the journey of that education and, and, and learning more about the different things that are going on, the, the different possibilities, right? Um, and so when I got introduced to, to when I got my first house and, and that's when I got introduced to real estate, then I said, you know, I can yeah. do real estate. Um, I'm now a full-time real estate <laughs> investor, but back then I'm like, I can do real estate. So let me go out and, and, and see how can I, you know, work with the system because we you know we tend to have a system that can help us you know depending on how how you you go about the system right so i'm like how can i i, I work the system how can i work my job how can i work my education to right this to work for me so then 2005 uh 2005 i bought another house 2006 i bought another house and so i started buying and i got into uh, rental properties and then i lost everything Right. So that was another, <laughs> <laughs> so that, that was another, another one. Those, right? <laughs> that was another one of those. And, and again, so uh, the lesson there though is like, I lost everything. And it's like, okay, I got foreclosed in my record. I have a short sale. You have all these things. And was, you think to yourself, like, man, it, like, it doesn't matter how hard you want to do this and you keep falling down. Well, you know what you do? You get up and, and try to do it again. Right. <laughs> and so that's one thing that I've learned. I love I, it. I, I, you know, you keep falling down and just don't give up. Right. You got to keep pushing forward. Right. Yeah. I'm thinking, I'm thinking back to those times, you know, 2005, 2006, heck yeah, man, let's go buy another home, you know, stated income loans. It was like, no problem. Yeah, exactly. And I'm just picturing yourself getting into that situation where it's like, okay, 2007 hits, 2008, and you're like, oh man, I just had to foreclose on everything. That's a, that was a painful time. But for those of you that are, that are in real estate, yeah. a very, very difficult time, uh, especially in California. Of all places. Oh yeah, it, it it was difficult, and 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 uh, part of the thing that I'm doing now that I didn't do then, which is one the one thing that I that I it, it, it kind of goes back to the next you know uh, change in your life, right? Is that back then I didn't have people uh, to mentor me, I didn't have people to help me, right. I didn't have people to teach me, and right. I was just trying to do everything myself. I thought I was on you know again uh, coming from Mexico, I'm like I can do this, I can do whatever I can, you know whatever is <laughs> given to me. And uh, which I think I can, except you have to be smart about it, right? So there's there's, there's a difference, right? You know, I, I've learned a lot, and I actually talk about it in my book. Is is, is you know, uh, the, there's you know the failures that you have and and the possibilities. You know, there's there's always gonna be risk. You're always gonna have a risk, except there's right. a, a a a dumb risk, and the, there's a smart risk. You have okay. to make sure that you tr trigger that. Back then, I was just doing dumb decisions in the sense of yeah. not being educated, not uh, in real estate, not having a mentor, not having all of that stuff, right? So, right. you know, I, I, you have to make sure that you align yourself with, with the, the risks that are going to benefit you because everything's a risk. As a matter of fact, right. life is a risk. <laughs> so, it, it is a risk. Now, two things I want to touch on. First of all, you have a book. And okay, so so not only are you this immigrant kid from Mexico who didn't speak English, you show up here you you are in the system so to speak and then you have a baby triggers i i need to figure out what i'm doing with my life i need to get educated i need to you, you graduate with honors from high school get into college master's degree real estate success three homes by the time you're 26 years old i mean awesome then you get hit really really hard and then you get back up again and 
You write a freaking book called You Can Do Anything Even When the World Says No. Yeah. Okay. Tell me, I mean, it's kind of obvious what your inspiration was, but when did this happen? When did the idea come that you were like, I got to write a book about this? I mean, exactly. What, what happened there? Yeah. The idea came out about a year ago. Uh, okay. Literally a little bit over a year ago. And I'm like, you know, one thing that I want to do now and, and, and I'm trying to do now is really help em- empower, inspire people um, to, to know that they can do anything they want, right? I mean, uh, it doesn't matter where you're right. coming from. It doesn't matter where you were born or who you were born into. Um, right. Is that you got to be able to have the, uh, the thought and the ability to say, you know what? Uh, sky, there's no, there's no limits. Sky, no, no limits, right? Right. So, and so uh, I, I decided to write the book and I said, okay, what can I do? Um, that, that would hopefully empower people. And I said, you know what, let me talk about my story. Let me, let me write about my story in some of the mind right. that I had to do. Um, and, and, and really get that message out. Right. And so my book is really more or less a, 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 a series of events of my life of all the different obstacles that I had to overcome again, though, it's not so much about my story. It's more about how does that relate to somebody and, right. and, and in any shape or form. And then how can they get an idea of, well, maybe I should do this and tweak this. And then that's going to help me, you know, get out of that uh, moment. Right. Well, let me just tell you, I haven't read it yet, but I plan to read it because I, you know, I'm not a Mexican immigrant and I am a straight white male born to privilege. Right. And, um, but even being born in the situation that I've been in and even going through my challenges and my story, I can't help but just have so much respect and so much, um, man, I, I'm just inspired even by you just talking about this journey. And, and I just, I love it. I, I am so grateful that we've had the chance to talk about this because I hope that my audience, I hope that people that are listening to this podcast, um, really grasp the concept here. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what you look like. It doesn't matter where you're from. It doesn't matter your skin color. It doesn't matter. Like so many things stacked up against you. And look at what you've done. You you started there. You got here. You got knocked down to here. You boom, 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 build back up. And you're so excited about life right now that you're writing a book to tell people about your journey. Yes. And I love it. I just love it. So, so um you you've hinted towards mentoring you've hinted towards people helping you guide you along the path and this is where i think a lot of people in my in my listening audience are going to find hopefully a message that resonates with them um you tried to do it yourself the first time and then you hinted towards having some some mentor who kind of helped you rebuild the second time and that made a difference tell me about that and you don't have to tell me who who it was but Tell me, what did they do to you that helped you build stronger the second time? Yeah, definitely. So <clears throat> it goes back to what I mentioned, right? I, I, I believe in education, right? And um, one thing that I've learned is that there's your traditional education and then there's your non-traditional education, right? Right. If, if, you, if you put those two in, together, a lot of times you went to school, your teacher was your mentor. They're teaching you on how to do some stuff. And so, For sure. And so I said, okay, well, you know, I, I need that non-traditional. So I got introduced to a couple of different people. And so I started doing that non-traditional education. education. And now that's actually part of my life. I mean, I do so many of that now. Um, right. I've learned so many different um, attributes and I've, I've gotten so much out of that and also met a lot of great people because of that. And so uh, the, the, the first time that I was introduced to a uh, uh, mentoring was for real estate. You know, when I got back into real estate, okay. I got back into real estate um, in 2000. 14, I believe, uh, 14, okay. 15, I got back. Took a little uh, breather. Yeah, I, I did. I'm, I, well, you know, <laughs> at one point I'm like, okay, there, this is not for me. I mean, I lost everything, so this is not going to be for me. And then, uh, and then something came back and said, you know what? Yeah, uh, you, you have to go back. So anyways, I got in, reintroduced to that. And, <laughs> and through there, I started learning the principles. I started learning um, the, the do's and don'ts. And I got more, more smart about my investments, right? Okay. And so, um, uh, you know, that was really my first, my first mentor. That was more triggered to... Um, a trade, which is real estate, just that more, more on that industry. Right. Uh, right. 2017, I got introduced to another mentor that was really more working on myself. Right. And, and, okay. and this is what I consider to be 
that self development, right? Um, I started doing things that I would never do in my, in, in my life. Um, I've never loved to, so we talk about me writing a book. I never loved reading, period. The right. last time I wrote a book was in high school um, because my <laughs> English teacher told me that I had to read a book, okay? Um, other than that, I didn't read. And so now I started making changes in my life. And so what yeah. did I make? Well, now I started reading. I read a lot of books. Yeah. Know, to educate myself and, and I'm reading books that are either self-development or books that are going to empower me in my journey. Right. Right. Um, obviously I wrote a book, uh, two books to be exact. Um, I, wow. um, I, uh, I started reading, I started making the different changes. So now I started manifesting, you know, we talked about manifest, manifest, right. um, for me, it's critical because I wanted to manifest what I foresee to be my future. What are the things that I'm working on? Right. And so I started making all those mind changes, um, to really, uh, put me in a different uh, perspective in my life, things that I didn't do before, right? Uh, one thing that I mentioned is a lot of times, you know, people are so tired of, uh, of from work that they come home and the first thing they do is a, a lot of people is they sit down and they watch TV or do the things <laughs> that are non-productive because yeah. their body is tired. Uh, right. I changed that. At one point I said, I can't, I, I, even if I'm tired, I have to work on myself. So what I tell people is make sure that you're working on yourself harder than you're working on somebody else's dreams. You know, interesting you know, yourself than, than other people. And so, and, and you say working on yourself, I mean, what, what do you mean? What, what, what are some examples of specific things you do to work on yourself? Uh, you talked about reading more books, but like, yeah, so yeah. Re- reading more books. Um, I, uh, um, uh, so I don't know if you read the, the miracle morning. Um, that book is really good. Um, uh-huh. so the miracle morning goes over five different things. So I started uh, applying those five things, which is, um, your reading, uh, you're uh, manifesting, you're doing affirmations uh, every day, um, you're writing, whether it could be a journal or something, right. uh, and you're exercising, right? Um, and, and so those are some of the things that I started doing that I never did. And as silly as that might seem, it, yeah. it, it's so uh, uh, breathtaking for your, for your mind, right? right. You do that when right. you get up now, you know? Um, and so those are some of the things that I did. The other thing that I did is, I, again, I actually... Um, got access to a couple of mentors by hiring mentors to help me through my journey. And, and then, okay. you know, mentoring me through, it could be through relationships. You know, uh, one mentor was, you know, just helping me get stabilized in terms of relationships. It could be through my business. It could be through anything that related to my self-development. Uh, and then networking. I do a lot of the networking. I go to a lot of seminars, a lot of events. Um, again, because I like to network with people, um, it's very, uh, you know, very uh, interesting to see uh, people's journeys and how a lot of things that they might be talking about can relate to you, you know. And so okay. I go through that. And, and so those are some of the changes that I've done. Um, I do believe that uh, to an extent, you are the average of the five people you hang around with. And what I mean by totally that, totally agree. Though, yeah. And so, and so what I mean by that, though, it, it has to be this how I see it, right? You have to be, uh, uh, you have to put yourself in, in the sense of you have to have five people. So who are those five people? Some of those five right. people should be people that are, uh, you know, uh, either working or, or playing at a higher level than you are that are willing right. to help you out, right? You want right. to make sure that you have people that are willing to help you out. So that, those are the people that are, that are in your network. That could be a mentor. That could be, you know, uh, maybe a friend that you, you found a, a, at a networking event that is playing at a higher right. level and is willing to help you out. The second group of people is people that are working at the same level or playing at the same level as you are. And okay. you're edifying each other. You're edifying each other and helping out each other through that journey. You're doing it right. together. Right. Again, you can find those people at uh, networking events. Right. The last group of people is people that are playing at a lower level than you are. However, they have the ambition to become to your level. And you have to do one thing that, that I think you should do a lot is reach down and pull them up with you, help them out, yep. you know? Yep. And I, I believe that that should be the, the, that average five people that you, that you can post yourself with. And so I, I've tried to do a lot of that now where um, I, I hang around with those kind of people to, to help my own journey too, and to help them too, you know? I love it. No, I absolutely love it. I, I am a firm believer in that as well. And, and I think that, um, you know, I was going to mention earlier, you know, the saying goes, uh, you know, you are what you eat. And, and, yeah. you know, when, when you're eating the same type of, of life that the people you want to be like are doing, you know, right, right this moment, actually, I, I've, uh, I've, uh, I've got a, a friend of mine who I respect a lot, who has had a lot of success in a totally different industry than I've ever been in. And, and I, as I've been picking his brain a little bit about how he built what he built, um, 
I'm just inspired by it. And whether I actually jump in and do what he's doing, I, I don't know that I will or not. But it is inspiring to see other people's paths. And, and I think that, as you mentioned, you know, have people in your life who are the type of people you want to become, have people that are at the same stage that you're at right now. Yep. And, and don't be afraid to grab some people and pull them up with you and say, hey, let me give you some shortcuts. Get here now. And, uh, and I, I have found that, um, you know, the reason why I want to do this podcast, and the reason why I, I'm so inspired by talking to people like you and, and some of my other guests so far is because I personally have found so much joy in mentoring and learning nice. from other people. Um, I think we're, we're all on this educational journey. Whether you've got a master's degree or whether you've got a, a GED, it doesn't really matter. The things you learn in school obviously will benefit you. And, and the thing that I remember feeling when I got my bachelor's degree, I remember um, I was the first of, I'm the eighth of nine kids and I was the first one to actually get my bachelor's degree. And, and I remember thinking, wow, I should feel really good about this. And I, I remember thinking, what did I actually learn from this? And what I learned was how to learn. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and I remember thinking at the time, I was like, you know, most of the things, I already had a business that I was running and it was a really fun business and I was making money. And I, I remember being so excited about it. And when I actually graduated and I walked, I, I looked at my wife and I said, I don't know that I'm going to use most of what I learned in my degree yeah. for what I'm doing in my life. Yeah. And um, she said, yeah, but what do you think you learned? And I said, I learned how to learn. Yeah. And so that was a big deal. But more than the learning how to learn, um, I learned that it's it's the people you know, the people you're around, the people, people, people is what brings you to that next level. And and when you mentioned uh, your emphasis on being part of networking groups, I think you said it three or four times. Yeah. Um, I, I can't, can't overemphasize that. that. that, that I, I have found, found a lot, lot of great, great relationships. relationships. Uh, people that I may never do business with, but people who inspire me and people who, um, who help me see vision of where I think I want to be. And, and I think that that's an awesome, awesome place to be. So thank you for for uh, mentioning that and, and emphasizing what a big part in your life that's been. Yeah, de definitely. And so uh, one thing that I wanted to mention, and, and, and you were talking about a few things now that, that just, you know, reminded me of, 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 of some stuff, right? Um, uh, number one, you know, again, we, we look at, you know, the possibilities, right? Coming from, from any, any culture, it doesn't matter. Right. You know, we look at all these different possibilities, um, or, or and, and, and we say, well, is that possible for me, right? And we right. start creating these limiting beliefs, right? And so, going back to some of the things that I that and that that I did uh, and, and still doing in terms of making the changes, um, and and you were talking about, well, just like you fit your body, uh, you know, you have to make sure you fit it the good, good stuff. It, it, it's no different than your brain, right? And right. So, what you have to be able to do to to remove those limiting beliefs is that. Um, if you want to be healthy, you're going to eat healthy, right? Well, right. if you want your mind to be healthy, you have to do healthy stuff. For instance, um, you know, one thing that I stopped doing uh, a couple of years back is probably not been two years now is I really don't uh, do not watch TV. Right. Okay? And as silly as that might sound, I mean, I'll watch it every song every now and then if I'm in a, at a friend's house right, uh, right. Or, or at an event in my house, I don't have cable. I don't have any of that stuff. Why? Because there's right. so much negativity in, in, in the programming, you know, you get so much, the news, Amen. Is, you know, right. The news is one of those perfect things. Right. And so yeah. uh, part of, you know, you having a healthy diet, you have to have a healthy mind. So make sure you put the right programs in your mind. So I do that through networking, make sure that you're, uh, you know, expanding your knowledge. That's what I do through, through reading, make right. sure that I hang around with a group, a great group of people so that I'm right. not getting all this negativity. So a uh, perfect example, if you smoke, um, and for whatever reason you stop smoking, right? You don't have anything in common with those people. And so therefore that, that relationship start, starts diminishing because there's nothing in common, right? Right, it, right. You have to find the common, a commonality within people, right? So anyways, I just wanted to share that because it, it goes in with what we're talking about. You know, you have to eat and feed your mind with the right ingredients to remove right. those limiting beliefs, you know? Right. Now, I, I would dare to say that... Um, 
I doubt that my audience is majority Latino. Okay, I doubt it, but I wish it were. Um, I I have so much respect for this community that that lives here in America who <laughs> feels like they can't be recognized, who feels like they can't be more than what they were quote unquote meant to be in their life. And your story is so inspiring to me, especially having a son who's who's Mexican. Um, I just I want him to, and part of why I think this is such an inspirational uh, interview for me is I want him to know that there are no limiting beliefs. There are no limiting factors in his life unless he keeps them there. Exactly. And, and I, I would, um, I would hope that whoever is listening to this and they have someone important in their life who feels like they've got these limiting beliefs, which I feel like so much of the Latino community, at least here on the West Coast, I don't know how much on the East Coast so much, but on the West Coast, there's so much negativity and so much, um, there is a feeling of oppression, I, I think. think. Mm-hmm. And, and I just, I guess in closing, if you were to deliver a message, let's say you had an audience that you could speak to that was just, if you could speak to every, every Latino that you know of and don't know in California and Arizona and, and Texas, all these areas that I'm familiar with, what kind of message would you give them to help them overcome this, uh, these limiting beliefs that you talked about and, and just get out and go do? Yeah, I, I would say that um, the, the, the biggest thing that, that anyone, anyone has to do is, I would say, stop trying to please everyone, right? And, and, and what I mean by that is that a lot of times we, we found ourselves, you know, in, in, in trying to create a validation um, by somebody else's opinions, right? We're trying to validate our own lives by making sure that this person is okay with that and that person is okay with that. One thing that I tell people is Interesting. That, yeah, it, you know, it, it's, it's, you're always looking for, for, for some, some, some place to get at that validation. One thing that I, that I tell people is that the one person you have to please is that one person you see in the morning when you wake up in that mirror is, is yourself, right? <laughs> and so, right. you know... Um, and so it, 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 that that's one component. The biggest thing is that once you start believing that, is you have to also believe that it doesn't matter what, which background you you're, or you you come from. It, you know, if you have an idea, and even if you don't know how to do that, it, it's not about you know the, the knowing. Is how are you gonna get there? You know, um, right? I, I talk about you know if, if I want to become if if I want to have a, a a beach house in in you know a different country. Okay, right. But that's 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 where I want to be. Now I have to, you know, chunk it down and look at how did I get there? What are the steps that I need to take to be able to get there? Right, right. right. And so you, you have to uh, create, uh, you know, the belief that one, you can have it. You know, you can have it. You have to work hard for that. And so what do you do? Don't let anything or anyone get in the way of, of, of your dream because that is your dream. It's not their right. dream. You know, right. Just because they don't accept it or, or they don't like it doesn't right. mean that you should stop, your, you know, from doing that, right? And um, the biggest thing is that mind shift. I, I cannot emphasize that because if you don't have the mindset, uh, you know, it, it's going to be diffi- very difficult. One thing that I, that I share with my, um, so I also do real estate investing uh, a mentoring. So I, I, what, I, yeah. what I tell my students, my very first section, by the way, in, in my mentoring program is I don't even talk about real estate. My very first two hours <laughs> that I talk to my mentoring students is all about a mind shift. You know, wow. what is your purpose? What is your intention? You know, um, where are you in your life? Um, because a lot of times in anything, in real estate or any business or even in your yeah. own life, you're going to get the no's. You're going to get the yep. that negative, uh, you know, responses. People tend to, uh, you know, once they get the first no, they, they, tend, they tend to freeze and they don't know how to react to that. And so the reason why I spent my very first session with my mentoring students on, on the mindset is because I want them to understand that just because somebody else's opinion is no, doesn't mean that that ends the game. You can continue right. to move forward in your journey, you know? Right, right. So the mindset is very critical. Awesome. I love that. And I, I am a firm believer of that as well. And uh, I, I am a big mindset guy. I'm a big uh, Brandon Burchard listener. I, oh. I love... I love a lot of his messaging. Um, you know, th- there's a lot of motivational people that I listen to and it, it is about mindset and, and, uh, I'm going to massacre this quote, but I heard recently, um, 
you know, the joy you feel in your life is not so is not nearly as much about where you are as much as where you feel that you are. And it's it's uh I totally massacred that, but the, the idea is that <laughs> that it you know, I know a lot of people with huge, massive uh, asset bases with all the wealth you could ever imagine who aren't happy and aren't in a good place mentally. Yeah. Uh, they hate their lives. They hate, they, they've lost their spouse due to problems or what have you. And, and, uh, and I see that time and time again. And yet, you know, I, I, for the past 11 years, I've done a lot of work in the Philippines um, and I've been to the Philippines dozens of times now and spent a lot of time there. And I meet people that are living in, uh, you know, the corrugated steel mm -hmm. tilt up houses who are happier than many people I know who with, with 20,000 square foot houses. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, and I, and I think that mindset is so absolutely important to value the things that are making you happy make the pursuit of happiness mm -hmm. your main goal and and you emphasize vision as part of the mindset if you don't have a vi if you can't visualize where it is you're trying to get to you're never going to take the steps to get there right <laughs> that's just part of it yeah exactly i mean if, if you have no if you don't have a, a vision you don't have a target what are you shooting for right right you're shooting blindly so you, you're never going to get to that to that end result right and um, and and yeah, so that that to me, that's one of the the, the more critical things, and uh, that that you have to do, right? You know, right. don't just do uh, you know your uh, your goals for twenty twenty now going into a new year, right? Um, right. Put it in writing, and then look at okay, what are the actions that I need to do to make sure that I can get there, right? And um, and so I, again, it, it it comes down to really really uh, working on yourself, right? You got to work on yourself a lot harder than you can work on somebody else's business. I love it. I love it. All right, Caesar. I want to wrap this up, but before we do, um, tell everyone listening, how do they get in touch with you? How do they follow you? Uh, how do they learn about your courses that you're teaching? Where can they buy your book? Tell us how to get in touch with you. So it's very simple. Uh, it, it, you can go to my website is uh, CesarRespino.com. So Caesar R. Espino. Yep. So Caesar is C E S A R R Espino dot com. And then you can talk you can find every, anything that I do. I actually have a list of quotes that I also created, my books, the different courses, anything, and you can get a hold of me through there. I love it. I love it. Thank you so much for your time today. I am truly inspired. I, I feel like I'm uh, ready to hit the ground running as I enter this new year. And uh Thank you so much for your time. Awesome. Thank you, Todd. Really appreciate it. And, and to your guests, thank you so much for tuning in. Hey, thanks for being here today on the Todd Wester Show. We're glad you stayed till the end. And we're especially glad you had a chance to enjoy the show as much as we did. If you liked this content, subscribe to our channel. You wouldn't believe how much that actually helps us get our message out to more people. As you subscribe, YouTube decides to put this video out to other people and we appreciate you listening. We appreciate you watching. We hope that you subscribe to both the podcast and the YouTube channel and hence getting us out there to more people who need help doing their entrepreneurship battle. We are all a battle. We're all here to help each other. So thanks for being here today. Subscribe to the channel. Go to the website at toddwestra.com. And as you are there, feel free to participate in any of our free classes, courses. We've got some great forums and groups that you can join into and get the help that you need to build your business, to grow stronger, to develop better relationships with the customers, all the tools you need to build a stronger business. We've got them here for you. So thanks for being here. Hit subscribe. We hope to see you soon. Thanks so much.